What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we've got a pretty fun list for you. Today, I'm hopefully gonna help out you and your wallet a little bit, and we're gonna talk about the top 10 guns under $350. Now I chose the $350 mark because I feel like that is sort of the standard line on where you can get quality firearms and not go too cheap and get kind of trash. I wanted all of these guns on the list to work well and you're having a good shot at getting what you want. And a lot of these pistols will even be do-it-all pistols because if you have a $300 budget, there's a fair chance you're looking for one handgun. You want one handgun to do everything. So I'm here to help you out with that. We are gonna have some stipulations. First being that all these guns have to be found for the $350 price point. And I have found them all, although it did take some looking. Some of these are a little rare, but most of them are readily available. And all of them are gonna be skirting the line of the $350. So depending on state, yours might actually be a little bit more because I live in Iowa and I have Iowa prices. There's gonna be a good mix of handguns on this list. We're gonna be talking about some 22 pistols, some nine millimeter subcompacts, and some full size. That way there's a little bit for everybody. Also unlike a lot of people that make list videos on the internet, we have actually had all of these firearms. We've actually tested them and put them through our protocol. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, we do firearms content every week. And if you're interested in that, I'd really appreciate you subscribe. We are here for you and not the industry. And if you want us to help us out with that, all you have to do is go down to the link in the description and join Patreon. Our Patreon supporters are our biggest supporters of the channel and we can't thank you guys enough. Also in that description is a link to a local shelter named Iowa. It's the YSS. Those kids could really use your help. It's a youth shelter, so please go down there. Click that link, donate to those kids. With that being said, let's get right into it with number 10. Number 10 is gonna be a new pistol, and that's gonna be the Ruger Security 380. Now, the Ruger Security 380 was kind of a sleeper hit for me. I didn't initially anticipate really liking this gun, and as we shot it more and more and more, and I started to get hundreds and hundreds of rounds through it, I did come to really appreciate the design, the price, and the features you get for that price. Coming in at around $300, the Security 380 is not the normal pistol you would want for concealed carry in today's market, simply because of the numbers 380. Most of the time, people look for a nine millimeter pistol for concealed carry and sort of miss out on the 9mm Kurtz or the 380. And the 380 pistol gives you a little bit less recoil with almost the performance of a 9mm, not quite. Most would consider it to be the on the low end for power, but certainly acceptable for concealed carry. With the Security 380, you get two magazines with the gun, one 10 round and one 15 round. So you get 15 plus one of 380 in this tiny little package. It only weighs 19 ounces and it's smaller than a Glock 26. On top of that, you get a fiber optic front sight, a blacked out rear sight, slide serrations, a light rail, good texture, a safety if you want it, and a pretty decent trigger as I can show you right here. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of the 380 altogether, but for 19 ounces, 15 plus one, you certainly wouldn't be unarmed with this gun. Pair it with the reliability and accuracy that we've had with this gun during our testing, and you certainly have a very good gun for under $350, and we're just getting started. Now, the gun has a three and a half inch barrel and a pretty decent coating, so you can use it fairly well for a do-it-all gun. It would not be an ideal home defense gun, but 15 rounds coming at you is 15 rounds coming at you, and I think you could get the job done, even if you decided to get this for a do-it-all handgun. In at number nine, we have the Palmetto State Armory Dagger. Now the PSA Dagger was one of the best handguns that came out in the last five years, especially for the money. And it kind of led the pack on the flood of Gen 3 Glock clones that you would later see after the Dagger. Once patents are up and people are allowed to do what they want, you generally get a better deal on guns that you didn't before. Glock doesn't have to give you a gun for 550 because their name is Glock, but PSA can do that for you because they are direct to the purchaser instead of dealing with the distributor. So they do limit a little bit of the cost without limiting the quality. Quality. The dagger comes with a lot of good ergonomics. It is a 15 round 
Glockish style clone with a polymer frame, a striker fired trigger, and a four inch barrel, giving it all the same specs but a little bit better grip than your favorite Glock 19. It also takes the same magazines and gives you a lot of interchangeability when it comes to the parts, allowing you to access awesome holsters, sights, and accessories that most pistols simply can't do. Coming in for $250 to $350, it's certainly one of the best all around guns you can buy. They actually have a lot of different variations of the PSA dagger, so you get to kind of pick and choose which one you want different sights different accessories different barrels and dot mounts or not so it's kind of up to you how much you want to spend but the base model does come in at around 350 to 250 dollars in at number eight we have the Taurus G3C now this is a, probably the most controversial gun on the list and the reason for that is it's certainly one of the cheapest nine millimeter handgun on the list but it does come with some question marks now we have thoroughly tested this one we had another one we had a Taurus G3 we have a Taurus G2C and a Taurus G2 we've done all thousand round reviews on all those guns and they work great. However, I did buy one of these models that didn't work out of the box and it had to go back to Taurus to be fixed. Now, I don't know if that's common or not. And honestly, with very cheap budget guns, especially under $200, these can be found for 250 or less. You do take a gamble. And when you go that low, sometimes you can get a product that doesn't work well out of the box. Now, if you do get a good one, they are great and they are really good for the money. As I said, the one in front of you here, we've absolutely beat to death, thousand rounds through it, no malfunctions whatsoever. Comes with front serrations, rear serrations, a rail, a pretty decent trigger that's actually interesting because it does have double straight capability, which is a feature most guns don't have. So if you do have a light primer strike, you can just pull the trigger again, you don't have to run the slide, and that's pretty cool not only for double strike capability, but that's pretty cool for dry fire practice as well. It does come with steel sights, and I believe they are Glock sights, so you can put Glock sights in there if you want, that's pretty neat. And it does come with three 12 round magazines, giving you pretty good value overall, and the magazines themselves are very high quality. So I would mention that I think this is a good gun for the money, but out of all the guns on this list, I would be relatively careful. And if I were to carry this, I would vet this with a couple hundred rounds of ammunition just to make sure it works. Great overall size. So if you wanted to carry this all day and you want to use it for a home defense gun at night, you absolutely can do that. And they are upgradable and adjustable as well. So that's neat. But just keep in mind that it's a great gun for 250 as long as you get a good one and just make sure you got a good one before you bet your life on it. In at number seven, we have the Beretta APX Centurion. Now the Beretta APX is a great gun, and I think it's certainly one of the most misunderstood guns of the last few decades. You're talking about a gun from the oldest firearms company in the world. It's a polymer strain striker fired pistol with a four inch barrel, good reliability, good durability, good parts availability, and it comes in under $350. And it also has a fire control unit just like the SIG 320. So if you're in a state, let's say, where it's hard to get handguns, you could just buy one and put the fire control unit in a myriad of grips that you could get online. But for whatever reason, the gun just didn't catch on and the price keeps getting lower and lower and the value on those things keep going higher and higher. I've seen several of the Beretta APXs, even some of the new ones now for sub $400 and especially the APX Centurion, which is my personal favorite. We've done a thousand round review on it as well, can be had for under $300. I think some of that is because of the looks of the pistol. The slide serrations look a little bit odd, but for the performance you get out, it is absolutely a must buy for that price point. Do it all pistol, polymer frame, four or five inch barrel, whichever one you want, any size grip you want, modular all the way through, reliable, comes from a good company with a good track record that has good customer service. Overall, I would say the Beretta APX is one of the best deals on the market and certainly deserves a spot on this list. In at number six, we have one of the best 22 pistols on the market, the Taurus TX-22. You like that thing, don't you? That's a lot of fun. Now there's a bunch of different models of this, but I'm going to specifically be talking about the five inch because that's the one I had and that's the one we tested. We have several thousand rounds for that pistol now and I've had nothing but great luck. Honestly, even though it looks kind of weird, it looks kind of space age, but it gives it kind of a look that separates it from some of the other 22 pistols on the market and it performs extremely well also, it was the 2019 gun of the year according to Guns and Ammo and that's like one of the times I've actually agreed with gun magazines, it is a very good gun. <laughs> good time. 
Comes with a threaded barrel if you want to suppress it. Comes with an optics mount if you want to put a red dot on it. That's very cool. And three 16 round magazines, giving you a lot more capacity than the average 22 that usually comes with 10 round mags. Looks pretty cool, comes in a bunch of different colors, but where it really shines is gonna be in the reliability and the accuracy. 22 pistols are notoriously unreliable, not because of the nature of the handgun, but the nature of the ammunition. And for whatever reason, the TX-22 we had was reliable with almost every ammunition we used and was very accurate even out to 100 yards with CCI mini mag, which allows you to plink all day, have a great time, and shoot as fast as you want with no recoil or bad wrist to worry about. I love that gun, and it's still one of my favorite 22s to shoot, and I certainly think it's good enough for the $300 price point. As far as 22s go, I know they're probably not quite as do-it-all as a nine millimeter because self-defense with a 22 is a bit of an issue. Now, another viable option would certainly be the M&P 22, and I do wanna reference the fact that if I could go a little bit higher, I would have chose it instead because they seem to be a little more expensive these days, and I also love that gun. So if you've got $400 to spend, I would look at the M&P as well. In at number five, we have one of my favorite handguns of all time. We're gonna be talking about the M&P Shield. Now, the Shield was the gold standard of nine millimeter subcompacts. It even started the concealed carry craze, as far as I'm concerned, with the very tiny guns. In the same way the Glock 19 started the polymer frame craze, the Shield really started the single stack subcompact phase. And until the double stack micro nines, the Shield was still the gold standard of carry. I even have a video that has a thousand on a review called the gold standard standard of carry. It has a 3.1 inch barrel and a capacity of seven or eight rounds, which is not much compared to modern day double stack nine millimeters, but with the shield, you can get it under $300 and you can also get absolute stone cold, not even fucking around reliability. And I like that. I would much rather have eight rounds that work all the time than 16 rounds that work sometimes. I'm an all the time working kind of guy and I appreciate that my guns do that as well. You also get pretty phenomenal accuracy out of the shield and you do get it from a company like Smith & Wesson, which is notorious for good customer service and making quality guns. Half the guns used in law enforcement today have the Smith & Wesson name on them. The Shield's one of the highest selling guns of all time, so you know there's gonna be parts, accessories, holsters, and all kinds of availability out there. And if you're looking for a go-to carry gun and you don't wanna spend more than 300 bucks, the Shield is really tough to go wrong with. In at number four, we have an old classic, the IWI Masada. Now the Masada offers a lot compared to other polymer frame pistols that are even two to $300 higher. A lot like the APX, it's incredibly misunderstood, and it also happens to have that fire control unit that you can swap out for other grips, which is a very unique feature and very fun to have, especially if you're in one of those states that's not quite as friendly to firearms. IWI is notorious for making military-grade firearms. They make very reliable, durable firearms. We have a 1,000 rounds for this pistol with no malfunction. It's a polymer frame striker-fired pistol with a four-inch barrel, making it amazing for all-day carry. It comes with two 17 round magazines giving you all the firepower that you need. Back straps, good texture, and a good trigger undercut making it a very comfortable, reliable, accurate firearm that you can get into for under $350. Now there are plenty of models of the IWI Masada as well, so if you don't want the four inch, you can pay a little extra and get more. We're just talking about the base models right now, but I gotta tell you, for the money, certainly one of the best and one of the most unique firearms on the list. In at number three, we have the Canik MC9. Now, this gun was actually released in 2023, and I'm surprised I've been able to find it for as low as I have. I was initially gonna put the Canik SC Elite on here, which was on the previous list. However, apparently that got popular. I don't know if it was my list or just you guys found out how good of a deal Canik was, but those guns have gained like a couple hundred dollars in the last few years, making the meta the only viable option to actually buy under 350. That's not too bad though, considering it is a double stack Micro 9 that allows you to have 12 plus one with a very, very small pack. We have a precock striker trigger on the gun. We have an optics mount. We have front and rear slide serrations. It comes with steel sights that are serrated for glare. Very cool. Good texture, a back strap setup, and it even comes with a holster in case you want that. Did I forget to mention that it has ambidextrous control? So if you're a lefty out there, you can run this gun right away as well. Super reliable, super durable, very accurate, and very fast. A 21 ounce overall weight and a 3.1 inch barrel gives you a really easy package to concealed carry and it's formidable for use in the home as well. 
Now, the performance of the gun really is second to none for its size and weight, which is really impressive it comes in at the price it does, because if this gun was $500, $600, or even $700, it would still be worth the money, let alone having it for $350. This is a 3.1 inch barrel gun. If you do your part, you can hit it 100 yards relatively easily. Enough capacity to deal with any threat that you need to, quick reloads, and really good controls. Overall, the Meta is one of the best guns on the market, and certainly one of the best guns for under $350. Now, in at number two, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. If you wanna get under 350 and you wanna get a stone cold gun, you can look at used guns. So for number two, we're gonna be talking about quality used guns, but specifically the Glock and the M&P. Now the M&P 1.0, I would argue, is probably the best gun under 350, but it's not really in production anymore, so it's kind of a cheat. And honestly, you can get some of the 2.0s for under 350 these days in the used market. And a lot like a used car, a used gun is still good well after the first 100 rounds, well after the first 1,000 rounds. Hell, they're good after the first 5,000 rounds. If you get a Glock or an M&P on the used market, let's say it's a police trade-in, let's say you go to the pawn shop or your gun shop and you see it sitting there and you're not sure, I I promise you if you pull the trigger on it, pun intended, you're gonna be okay. The Glock and the M&P are two of the most proven pistols in the world. They've been used for law enforcement, military use, civilians. They are absolutely ubiquitous when it comes to the tactical community and for good reason. They give you a size to weight ratio, reliability, accuracy, and feature set that really is hard to beat. You can get holsters for any of these guns. You can get sights, red dots, lights, whatever you wanna put on these, you can do. And if you get into the M&P 2.0 Compact or the Glock 19, they're small enough to carry and big enough to fight with. I think they're an amazing choice. Now, if it wasn't a cheat, I'd put it at number one because you can't get them new for that price, but used, they're still an absolute monster. Now, before we get into number one, I do wanna mention some honorable mentions, and I was actually surprised at how many quality guns you can get for under 350. Modern manufacturing really is amazing because in the old days, you'd never be able to get this quality of a firearm for this cheap. I do wanna mention the Ruger Wrangler, which comes in around $150. Yes. It is a revolver with 22 long rifle, which makes it a little less useful in all categories as some of the other guns on the list. But if you're looking for a 22 that you just want to shoot recreationally and you want to get into it for super cheap, I've hit targets with the Wrangler at 100 or even 150 yards. And for $150, you essentially get a yard per dollar, which is great value in my mind. I also wanted to mention the Taurus GX4, which is a Micro 9 that comes from Taurus that I really like. However, I had some issues with the gun. I I think it's good value for the money, but I didn't want to put it over some of these guns since they're so amazing. We've already mentioned the M&P 22, and I did want to mention the High Point because it's one of the cheapest guns you could possibly get, the High Point C9, around $100. And is it good value for $100? It is, but by comparison to some of the quality guns on this list, it kind of sucks. In at number one, we have, ooh, the CZ P10S. Now what's interesting about the CZ P10 series is if you look real hard, you can actually find the C and the F for under 350 as well. So I would probably call number one the CZ P10 series, although the only one you can find reliably under 350 is gonna be the P10S. Now the P10 is another one of those sort of forgotten, misunderstood guns from a great company with a great track record, great features, and a low price. I would argue it's the best, that's why I put it at number one. We have a light rail, a lot of them come optics ready, although the 350 models do not. We have front and rear serrations. We have one of the lowest bore axis and one of the most comfortable grips on the market. We have ambi controls. We have an absolute phenomenal striker fired trigger, polymer frame, obviously, and then you comes equipped with two 12 round magazines, which give it a really good value. 24 ounce overall weight and a three and a half inch barrel gives you just the right size for a do it all pistol. I really like this gun for carry. It's big enough for my big hands and it would certainly be a formidable home defense gun and you can get into it for a really low price with a quality name attached to it. CZ makes some of the best guns on the market. They're one of my absolute personal favorite companies. They even pre-run these guns so it's very difficult to find a lemon in the CZ world and they're also pretty modular. The holster availability is there, magazine availability is there, sights you can find. They come with back straps, they have pretty good texture and the ergonomics on the gun are really really amazing. Get in this gun and pick it up and it just feels like part of your hand just because of how deep you can get into the beaver tail. Super reliable, super accurate, and unbelievably fast. Probably the fastest small gun, at least in my hands, just simply because how I can bear down on the gun and how short the trigger reset is. I'll show you here. 
really nice trigger, really short reset, allows you to get very fast strings of fire, shoot a distance, shoot up close, and just look really good for a really low price. And you can defend yourself from pretty much anything, except for bears. Bears with lasers, can't do that. But everything else besides bears with lasers, maybe alligators, you're fucking good to go. The CZP-10S is one of the best guns on the market, and in my opinion, the best gun for $350. I would love to hear your choices because I can't know every gun on the market, but I can try. And the best way for me to find out some of the best new guns that are at a good price is for you to list them in the comment section. So put it in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of the video. Give me some options for some new reviews. And if you like this content, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that notification button as well. That always helps. Please support our Oklahoma shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Got a mustache hair in my mouth. It happens. Do, it doesn't happen to you, though. No, I mean, I get your mustache hair in my mouth. Yeah, but I don't, you gotta wait till you're like 80 to get your mustache hair in your mouth. And go. <laughs> Hold on, I have to sneeze. Thank you! That was super cute. Okay. <laughs> Moving keeps me warm. Yeah. Being inside keeps me warm. <laughs> oh, see, it frickin' jinxed me. You jinxed me! <laughs> oh. The big one's easy to hit from here, huh? When in doubt, hit the big one. <laughs> <laughs> no promises on this. <laughs> well, I'll take that. You gotta keep and going. And cut. You gotta keep going. Looks Not the first one and the last one. one. Oh this is all that counts God. anyway. <laughs>